An out-of-work ex-con leads police on a wild ride. Driving a stolen lumber truck, it's flatbed in flames. I can't believe they stopped this guy, man. It can't get much more dangerous. He was on the open road with a 18-wheeler that was on fire. It was a true Wild West chase and shootout. Dallas, Texas. NBC News correspondent Jay Gray is always on the lookout for the next big scoop. Looking for this man in the surveillance video. I'm a news guy. I always like to see a good story. On November 7, 2001, the veteran newsman, then with local station KXAS, gets the chance to cover just that. It was really amazing. Every major news organization was involved in the story. Everybody went live with this. Police say just after 1.20 this afternoon, the hijacker hotwired the truck. The drama begins when Bernice Wilson, an unemployed truck driver with a criminal record, spots this 18-wheeler loaded with lumber outside a KFC. I was homeless and had nowhere to go and couldn't get any help. I thought I could get this truck and go sell the lumber and get me some money. Get a motel room, got the streets. I broke the window, got in, and drove off. Unbeknownst to Wilson, the truck's driver jumps on the back of the rig as he's driving away and disconnects the air hoses to the rear brakes, locking the rear wheels. That driver was able to dislodge the air brakes. He made a, a real valiant effort to try and, and take control of the truck before it pulled away. The truck driver ends up jumping from the truck. In spite of the locked rear wheels, Wilson can still operate the big rig. He pulls out, but within minutes, thanks to a 911 call from the truck's driver, Police are on Wilson's tail. I didn't have a plan. The individual I was associated with had said that he wanted to buy some lumber or was going to his house. He drove through yards. He drove around businesses, across medians. He crossed highways. He got on the wrong side of the highway and drove against the flow of traffic. Soon, the friction from the truck's locked rear wheels ignites the rubber tires. Those flames set fire to the rig's flatbed, a forklift, and the load of lumber. Once it caught fire, it just burned uncontrollably. You see this truck with a huge ball of fire in tow. You not only saw the, the bright orange flames, but you see the huge plume of black smoke from the truck as well. In spite of the flames and the sea of police behind him, Wilson shows no signs of slowing down. I knew I had to get some place where I had room to stop the truck and safely surrender before the police had a chance to take a shot at me. Here you come. Across the city, crowds appear as people watching the chase live on TV come outside to see it for themselves. The 18-wheeler sends pedestrians running for their lives and motorists swerving off the road as it barrels through residential neighborhoods. Police were doing everything they could to try to stop Burns from driving. Uh, they tried to shoot out tires, they tried to block roads, he'd just drive around them. Fearing for the public safety, police commanders give the order, shoot to kill. They authorized their officers to fire at the truck and to use deadly force if necessary, and, and they deemed it necessary. They had no intention but me to get out of the truck alive. Police fire on the truck from the ground and air. I knew that the police would issue a code 100, which I knew was a shoot to kill order. At that point, I was just trying to figure out how to get out of the truck. I never thought they would start shooting like they did. I'm thinking, if you shoot me and kill me, who's going to drive the truck? we got an 80,000-pound vehicle running loose on the streets of Dallas. Then somebody's bound to get hurt. Got it. With a trail of burning tires in his wake, Wilson decides to end his terrifying ride after 90 minutes, bringing the smoldering rig to a stop near the Trinity River. When I finally did stop, I was in an area where I could pull the brakes and jump out and lay flat on the ground. Wilson is arrested without further incident and carted off to jail. After a brief trial, He's convicted of felony robbery, evading arrest, and unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. He's ultimately sentenced to 28 years behind bars.
a chemical accident at the prison laundry has left him partially blind. Wilson now realizes the mistake he made that day has cost him dearly. I wish it had never happened. All I can do is apologize to the owner, the driver, the citizen in Dallas. If I hadn't have did what I did, I would have sight. So that's part of the penalty that I paid for doing what I did. I don't think he was planning on stealing an 18-wheeler that day. I think it was just opportunity knocking at the door, and he answered. 